Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to thank the NKDB for organizing this important event. Um, today, I've been asked to speak about the role of the United Nations in, in holding perpetrators of human rights violations in the DPRK accountable. And let me start by giving a quick overview of how the United Nations has been historically trying to address serious human rights violations in the DPRK. In 2003, the Commission on Human Rights adopted a resolution expressing its deep concern about systematic widespread and grave human rights violations in the DPRK. In 2004, the mandate of the UN Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in the DPRK was established for systematic documentation, reporting, and advocacy. These were very important initiatives acknowledging the seriousness of the human rights situation in the DPRK and the need for more systematic efforts to um, to make um, to secure accountability. Another important milestone uh, was in 2013 when the Human Rights Council established a commission of inquiry to undertake a comprehensive investigation of the of the human rights situation in the DPRK. The COI report, as we all know, was a historical document providing details uh, of the dire human rights situation in the DPRK. And the COI report stated in a clear terms that crimes against humanity might be happening in the DPRK and recommended that the United Nations Security Council refer the situation to the International Criminal Code or refer or establish similar mechanisms for criminal prosecutions. The CI report also represented the voices of victims, witnesses, and their families. The DPRK, following the CIO C COI report, also seems to have felt a bit of pressure and started engaging, although in limited ways, with the UN human rights mechanisms, such as the Universal Periodic Review, treaty bodies, and thematic special rapporteurs. In 2015, as a follow-up to the COI report recommendation, the OSHR office in Seoul was established to continue the monitoring and documentation, enhancing engagement with the governments, and maintaining visibility of the human rights situation in the DPRK. The DPRK human rights situation is also annually discussed at the Human Rights Council and General Assembly, demonstrating the importance of the issues. And, and there are annual resolutions on the DPRK, both in the General Assembly as well as in the Human Rights Council. Other international human rights mechanisms, such as the Universal Periodic Review, treaty bodies, and special procedures have also been monitoring and documenting the human rights situation and providing concrete recommendations to the DPRK and the international community to establish accountability. Despite efforts from victims, civil society organizations, United Nations and the member states to seek accountability, the lack of cooperation from the DPRK and the lack of consensus amongst the UN Security Council members to refer the situation to the International Criminal Code have made it difficult to see tangible outcomes in ensuring accountability. The referral of the situation to the ICC as recommended by the COI, the Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in the DPRK, and our office itself would have expedited the accountability process. However, in the current political context, that is less likely to happen. Now I'll touch upon what more can the UN and the international community do to make DPRK accountable. While the DPRK has the primary duty to investigate and prosecute gross violation of human rights, the international community under the UN Charter and international law also has obligations to take collective actions in a timely and decisive manner, particularly if the state concerned fails to protect its population from serious international crimes under the responsibility to protect. The victims and their families have the right to truth, justice, remedy, guarantees of non-reputation and reparations. 
Given the difficulties in addressing impunity in several countries, like in the DPRK, the international community needs to be more creative and explore new ways to, to seek accountability and justice opportunities and to push the accountability agenda. If you have followed, in the recent years, investigative mechanisms mandated to collect and preserve evidences for accountability purposes has been established in countries like in Myanmar, Syria, and Sudan. These mechanisms are important for preparing the groundwork for any future accountability mechanisms. They undertake important work such as continued documentation, legal analysis of cases, and engaging with different member states to pursue accountability irrespective of the forms of accountability pursued in future. In the DPRK also, as mandated by the UN Human Rights Council in 2007, OSHR has been strengthening its monitoring and documentation efforts and have established a central information and evidence repository. The central information and evidence repository will be a key resource for any future national or international truth and justice processes. Over the past years, OSHR legal experts have been assessing all information and testimonies with a view to developing possible strategies to be used in any future accountability processes. Civil society organizations such as the NKDB that documents human rights violation in the DPRK have over the past years collected a large body of information and evidence on the serious human rights violations in the DPRK. The success of any accountability and justice processes in the DPRK will therefore need an active engagement and participation of the civil society organizations. The UN and the international community need to actively engage with civil society organizations to utilize their expertise. In the DPRK, ensuring accountability for gross human rights violations should go beyond criminal prosecution. The UN and international community must explore all elements of accountability, such as criminal justice, reparation, truth-seeking, institutional reforms, and guarantees of non-reputation. Empowering victims and survivors to contribute to, shape, and participate in accountability process that affects them is equally important. Due acknowledgement of their experiences, their voices, and their rights ensures legitimacy and contributes to restoring victims' dignity. The UN and the international community need to speak to the survivors and their communities and listen, understand, and internalize their needs and concerns. Stories from the DPRK escapees must be shared as much as possible. This is an essential precondition for the successful pursuit of justice, truth, and accountability. Together with the civil society organization, the international community, and the UN must also protect the DPRK escapees who decide to come to the Republic of Korea or other third countries. In this regard, OSHR is undertaking consultations with different stakeholders, including victims and families and other people from the DPRK, to develop possible accountability strategies and to understand what accountability would mean to them. This was in accordance to the recent mandate, additional mandate by the Human Rights Council this year. In the absence of international accountability mechanisms, we have seen that national codes can also serve as alternative avenues for seeking accountability and reparations. Accountability under the accepted principles of universal extraterritorial jurisdictions can be one such avenue. The UN and the international community can provide technical and other support to lawyers, civil society organizations, victims, and their families to engage in these national legal processes. It can also provide amicus briefs in such cases. And, and if you see, we, we have seen similar cases, few cases in ROK and, and also in Japan in the, in the recent years. We have also seen some states successfully tried perpetrators in their own jurisdiction, and we think this option can be tried for the DPRK, irrespective of the results. The Republic of Korea undertake comprehensive 
documentation of allegation of human rights violation in the DPRK and undertake legal analysis of the available inter available information. The record center and the documentation center does have a wide body of information, uh, much, much greater than any other organizations. And, and I think the international community and the ROK can use that vast body of information uh, to seek accountability in the DPRK. There are other measures also which has been discussed in the context of DPRK, like the financial accountability and vetting of individuals involved in serious human rights violations, which is somehow gaining a bit of momentum. Uh, as you, as you, we all know, the like United States, European Union, and the UK have in the re recent years included DPRK individuals and entities in the global sanctions regime for serious human rights violations. The UN can help member states establish evidence-based vetting mechanisms and provide relevant information to sanction human rights violators. The UN and the international community should continue to support civil society organizations operating outside of the DPRK and help protect their space to monitor and document, support court cases, reach out to the victims and families, undertake research and engage in advocacy on accountability in the DPRK. As we all know, uh, ensuring accountability is, a, is not easy, it's hard. Um, ending impunity and establishing accountability in the DPRK is a long-term goal. The international community and the UN must continue to seek consensus to refer the situation to the ICC or establish similar mechanisms we must also continue, as the, our former speaker has said, to undertake the groundwork to assist any future truth, justice, and accountability processes. Diplomatic solutions to the security and denuclearization can help improve the human rights situation. However, there is a need to ensure that human rights are mainstreamed through all diplomatic engagements with the DPRK from the onset. Pursuing accountability in the DPRK is clearly hard, but we should not think that it is not possible. Let us make all the efforts to end impunity in the DPRK. Thank you.